The Centers for Disease Control reports one in every six Americans, 48 million people, get sick every year from eating contaminated food or drinks. Some bacteria present in food may grow if those foods are cooked and not cooled properly. Cooling foods properly minimizes growth bacteria, preventing your customers from getting sick. Rapidly cooling cooked foods using our best recommended practices will ensure foods are cooled quickly and safely. What is rapid cooling? It means cooling cooked foods from 135 degrees Fahrenheit to 70 degrees Fahrenheit in two hours and from 70 degrees Fahrenheit to 41 degrees Fahrenheit within the next four hours. What types of food need to be rapidly cooled? Larger pieces of meat, chilies, soups, broths and large pots, rice, beans, potatoes, any cooked vegetables. Here are some items and methods we recommend using for rapid cooling. A thermometer, shallow pans, ice wands, or an ice bath. Let's go over each method and how it can help you quickly cool whatever type of cooked food you've prepared. First, it's important to always use a food thermometer, preferably a digital one with an easy to read screen. To help you monitor the process, ensure your thermometer is calibrated to 32 degrees Fahrenheit in a glass of mostly ice with a little water before taking temperatures. Next, remove cooked food from cooking equipment and allow it to sit at room temperature until it reaches 135 degrees Fahrenheit. The length of time it can sit out on the counter depends on the type of food and the initial temperature once removed from the oven, stove, or grill. Make sure that when you take the food temperature, you place the thermometer in the warmest and or thickest part of the food product. Before your food cools to 135 degrees Fahrenheit, determine which type of cooling method you want to use. With large pieces of meat, slice it into smaller pieces and place it in a shallow pan or tray before placing the pan in the walk-in cooler. For soups, chilies, broths, or other large volume liquid foods, use an ice wand. Make sure you're using an ice wand that has been washed, rinsed, and sanitized before putting it in the freezer. Store the frozen ice wand in a clean container or wrapped in plastic wrap to keep it clean until you need to use it. It is important that you only place the ice wand in food once it has cooled near 135 degrees Fahrenheit or else it will melt too quickly and won't effectively cool food. Once it reaches 135 degrees Fahrenheit, place the frozen ice wand in your pot of food and stir continuously for three minutes. Then leave the wand in food. Don't forget to come back and stir every 20 minutes. Remember to always use a fully frozen ice wand and remove the ice wand once it melts, replacing it with a new frozen ice wand. Another method you can use is an ice bath. Fill your food prep sink with ice and a little water and place pot inside basin. Be sure you have a full sink of ice water at least the same level as the food inside the pot. Stir for three minutes and remember to come back and stir every 15 minutes or more frequently. Remember, when the ice melts, you must add more ice to make sure the food is always sitting in ice cold water. For denser, thick foods such as rice, refried beans, mashed potatoes, or pasta, spread food out onto a shallow pan no more than two to four inches deep or on a sheet tray and place inside walk-in cooler on a speed rack or top shelf. Do not place hot foods directly beneath cold foods to prevent accidental warming of surrounding foods. Another option for foods like pasta or cooked diced potatoes is to place them under cold running water. You can also submerge these foods in an ice bath prepared in your food prep sink. Be sure you always leave foods fully or mostly uncovered and single layered until they have completely cooled to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Otherwise, the heat will get trapped inside the food which prevents cooling. This means do not place lids or plastic wrap over foods or stack them in a cooler until they have reached 41 degrees Fahrenheit or colder. We also recommend keeping track of foods that are being cooled on a log sheet. This is especially helpful if you have a lot of foods that are being cooked and cooled at one time. A cooling log is a spreadsheet with spaces for different foods and their temperatures to be written down at certain times throughout the cooling period. Keep logs documenting what time your food is at each critical temperature will help you ensure it reaches 70 degrees Fahrenheit within the first two hours and 41 degrees Fahrenheit within the next four hours. To sum up what we have learned today, let's go through all the cooling methods. 
When cooling large pieces of meat, slice or portion before placing them in an uncovered single layer sheet pan in the walk-in cooler. This will allow them to cool quickly and evenly. In order to cool thicker liquids such as chilies and stews, stirring with a sanitized ice wand will help cool the larger batches within the required time frame. If a sanitized ice wand is not available, an ice bath is also a great way to cool large batches of food. Remember that once placed in an ice bath, you must still stir the food product to make sure the middle is cooling properly. For thick foods such as refried beans and rice, placing them in a shallow pan and putting them on the top shelf in the cooler uncovered will help them cool quickly. For cooked starches such as pasta or potatoes, placing them under cold running water for a while will help them cool off quickly. You can also submerge these foods in an ice bath. When cooling any type of food, it is best to leave them uncovered in the walk-in cooler until the internal temperature of the food reaches 41 degrees Fahrenheit. This can be checked and monitored with your cooling logs. Please contact your local health department for additional information and training.